The great masters of marine hold a wealth unparalleled throughout Slaver's Bay, and had been an obvious first choice to make contact when financing and funding became the topic of conversation. It was not hard at all to make an appointment with such a mighty noble. After all, landing on Dragonback in the Grand Bazaar is sure to make quite an impression. When he'd first rode upon Majesty, she was barely twice his size. Now she landed in the bazaar and could crush market stalls beneath her. She wasn't even full-sized yet. <laughs> As if dragons ever had a full size. It wasn't too long after the mighty entrance of Marine that the pair had been invited somewhere more personable and private. The massive and extensive gardens of Great Master Faiz Dahar, the patriarch of the Zosa Gallery family. By all accounts, he was considered to be the wealthiest and most influential of the Great Masters, the elite of the City of Marine. The gardens were massive and beautiful, making up the south quadrant surrounding the Great Pyramid, from which the Masters ruled. Even here, Majesty seemed to struggle to fit, eventually finding a place to land in one of the courtyards of the Pyramid. The Great Master stood there, awaiting the mighty beast, observing it with wide, open eyes, stunned to see such a beast. I had been told most of these things passed when Illyria fell, Zolga Adare spoke in a soft term, showing genuine fascination with the creature before him. The beast that brought the squabbling kings of Westeros to heal. The beast that once ruled the world. I hope, dear friend, that you do not intend to bring him here to conquer us. The great master had a laugh within his tone, but there was some genuine worry to be had. For what could any man do against the dragon? Rhaegar himself did not respond, instead he merely dismounted Majesty, slowly petting the side of her, rubbing his hand against the scales. It was as if he could feel her emotions, unease, worry, a bit of anger. You must be the Lord of Valyria, I hear of, House of Cinder. Valyrians don't often leave their isles. Hagen's forefathers didn't do so for a hundred years. Yet, here you are, the Master laughed. Yet here I am. Merigard responded finally, letting go of majesty and walking to greet the man, dressed in fine clothing and gems, each looking so filled with fortune that a single one of them could buy a dragon pit tenfold. Rhaegar knew he'd met the right man, now he just needed to speak the right words. Rhaegar had seen majesty grow and grow, and knew that if she was left to roam as she had been, eventually she'd burn down a village. Already she'd beaten a few lost sheep and a few lost shepherds. If he wanted to show he had control of such a beast, and give her someone to be safe herself, a dragon pit was the only option. Illyria had never held a dragon pit, but the designs to build one did exist, even if they were expensive to get one's hands on. The Targaryens themselves held no dragon pit. Instead, their dragons held a natural pit within the caves and confines of Dragonstone, and the pits of Illyria had been long lost within the Doom. It would cost a fortune to build it, and that is why he had come here. They tell me it's gold, you seek, Zolga Are spoke, guiding King Rhaegar towards a large and lavish table that had been set out within the courtyard, covered in meats and fruits of the most exotic varieties. I'd ask if you're selling the beast, but I know no man of your blood could ever part with them. I've read much of them, and the bonds of Illyrians shared with them. A bond that saved Neva from a hundred years past when it all fell to ash. Zolga Alares seemed to speak more as a historian, an interested party, rather than an, any sort of threat intended within his words. He seemed well educated and fascinated by the sight before him. The history of such beasts is something I endure. To even see one up close is a dream, but to have the chance to study them, that would be worth gold indeed. As much I could tell you, I spent months within the caves with Majesty, bonded with her through the shared life we lived for that time. I don't imagine that even the Dragon Lords of old or the King of the West had spent as much time with their dragon, eating the same scraps of meat off the carcass of a sheep. Quite different to the food you have before you now, no? Rhaegar shrugged. Mutton isn't too bad. Dragonfire cooks it quicker than you'd imagine. Zolga Aure tapped his fingers against the table. I can imagine. Those fires once melded stone together to produce walls mightier than any man could imagine. 
buildings that look as if they've been raised from hell themselves. When I was young, I wished to travel through Valyria on the back of my boat. Then we received the tribune from Valantis telling the tale of the Golden King, lost forever within the Smoking Sea. From that day on, I decided to focus my efforts on more important matters, such as wealth, power, the only things that mattered in Marine. In this land, symbols of status are what separate the wheat from the chaff, for when you're within our halls, you never know when you'll end up at the bottom of the pyramid. <laughs> Very literal, isn't it? Surprised to see a land somehow take a step back from the ways of kings and lords. Instead, you rule by coin. The Delirians rule with dragons. The rest of us have to rely on gold. And considering you have come to ask for gold yourself, I wonder if gold can rule anywhere. Some tell tales of dragon hordes, though it seems you ought never got a chance for such luxuries. The books say differently, of course, that dragons have no such need for them. But I do. And you know I do. So let us not play this song and dance. I need a good sum. My students predict around a million gold. To design and fully produce a dragon pit. One I am able to use to keep majesty in mind and keep her safe. The people are prone to anger when around such creatures. Jealousy. A million gold. I suppose for a beast so mighty you mean an even mightier building. And for a price, what do you offer? An alliance of sorts. The might of a dragon shall aid you, should the hordes from this north or your uneasy brothers in the south take a lunge at you. A dragon, to protect this pyramid from all the threats you may face. So Gallery pondered, and then laughed. If Marine should fall, it shall not be from the outside. It shall be from within. We have the money, the troops, the resources, and above all else, the sheer manpower to live forever. But should these men holding our tools, when they learn that they outnumber us? <laughs> and you think Dragonfire can't put down an uprising of slaves? I have slaves of my own, I can imagine them being uh, unable to land a single hit upon a dragon and its scales. With this pyramid of yours, I'm sure you could last an eternity before they make a dent. Perhaps? Or perhaps I'll fall as another great master will want my wealth, will want my seat, will want my power. All of this is nothing but a game. Each piece must fit together. You sit as a king thanks to a dragon. But there is more to the great game than that. Even the smallest piece can collapse a kingdom. Rhaegar paused and considered the words for a good time. You seem to already have something in mind, then. Not an alliance, but you do hold an interest in my dragon. So tell me, Faye the ha. What is it you would seek in return for my financing. Simple. Status symbols rule. And what would be a greater status symbol than a clutch of dragon eggs? There was a silence that filled the air as Rhaegar considered what he was being asked of him. Dragon eggs. Majesty had not even had her first clutch yet. God knows if she'd had a, ever have any. And this man was demanding them, speaking as if he was entitled to it. As if the eggs were a right, a, a deal to be made. By him, not by majesty. It took a moment for Aegard to even process the request. Majesty has no eggs. No, of course not. I am speaking as a down payment, so to speak. One million gold, enough for you to build this dragon pit where she is sure to lay. And when she does, I get the first clutch of eggs. And after that, every one after, you keep. Unless you wish to sell again. <laughs> what do you say, Dragonblood? Why don't you shake a sinner's hand? Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where we are continuing as King Rhaegar of Illyria. We are in an interesting position right now where we do not have our heir. We have our daughter, but by the laws, she cannot inherit. Uh, if we reign for 10 years, then we have a chance of, of forcing that through. And this could be this could be very, very good for us uh, to secure our dynasty. And as you can see, and as you've seen from the intro, 
we've got gold. We've got money. And uh, this is perhaps a deal that we may end up regretting. But we have agreed to sell any clutch or the first clutch of eggs born from Majesty to Marine. I mean, Marine are wealthy. Marine uh, are also at war. Oh, with Omba. I guess they must be raiding them for slaves, most likely. Um, and this could be very profitable for us, or it could be very dangerous for us. But we've made this deal nonetheless, because we have little choice if we want this dragon pit built. And obviously that is going to be the first use of this coin. A thousand gold for a dragon egg, which, if we were equating it to, to what it would actually be worth in, in the Game of Thrones, maybe a million? Which, you know, may be an overstatement, especially since he's not getting the egg now. But there are very few dragons in the world as we've been over. If I have any new ones been built, born? No, but Maraxes is now wild. And Lady Ethelide of the Stormlands, the uh, daughter of Oris, holds a dragon egg. Interesting. But let's have a look. Whose dragon egg is it? From Vega. Well, but Maraxes is a wild dragon. Still at the Iron Throne, though, but I assume that must mean that her rider has passed away. I will... Okay, so they're leaving Tolos to come to my capital, is, is what I'm seeing here. Uh, yes, I did give myself Tolos. I, I, uh, I'm recording this right after I'm recording the last one. So if you guys left comments saying, oh, actually, you messed up and you should not have Tolos, I do have Tolos. So, oops! I probably messed up in a lot of ways. We, She arrived at my court and then immediately died. Interesting. <laughs> but, um, oops. Ooh, see if I can find this man. Maybe you can help me with my uh, combat ability. Um, and Taurus is up to 7k, but we are slowly rebuilding up our army. Uh, it's going to take us a while to rebuild up. And uh, it's also going to take us a while to build up our ships, by the look of it. Uh, let's maybe move train troops. Um, let's train my children, but I'll do that when I have a, a son. For now, we'll just train in Tolos. And we'll get on overseeing our realm. Marine is not the sort of uh, man I should be trusting in Druth. I mean, look at the wealth he already has. But that sort of wealth is good for us. And he's also the only one I could see who could even afford. It was even offering that sort of thing. Slowly getting our piety up as well. We are not a very pious person, especially now that we are lustful. There you go, the dragon pits have been built. Which increases our court size, but it will also... Oh, whoa, whoa. What is this? The Mantaris Peasant Revolt. But they raised... It... Okay. They're not fighting me, but they raised in my land for some reason. Unless I just missed them. Winter has come to an end. Wonderful. Let's get our tax income up. Ooh, this is not going to end well. The peasant revolt is bigger than his own army. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh they're still going to win on morale. Oh, I mean, it is peasants with sticks. So <laughs> Maybe it was never in doubt. Has he won his war? Yes, he's, he's got 100%. And he's had a son, his heir. No, it's not his son. He has a son, but his son is an heir. Instead, it's... His... Gran? Oh, because it's, it's Belechio's son, I see. For a long search, you find the fabled warrior you've been looking for at a local inn. He reeks of spirits the old man is suddenly asleep under a table. His sword is of an unfamiliar make, and the man's appearance certainly betrays his eastern origins. But could this really be the legendary, legendary fighter you seek? Well, let's pay and find out. 
Let's see if he can train me. I wonder if the uh, sword I don't recognize is Valyrian steel. I mean, I'm Valyrian, so I imagine I know what Valyrian steel is. I do want to to see if I can get Valyrian steel in House Sindh's family as well. They want to fire my Master of Whispers. Sure. Hmm. No, let's stick with the law. Can't be losing piety. Get a new Master of Whispers. Alios. You'll do. Train Troops is helping here, definitely. Right, 50% chance of getting a poor fighter. So he's... One day, as he walked into his room, you see the old man trying to catch a fly with a pair of small wooden sticks, and he insists on using whenever he needs. You inquire why, and says, men who, ca who can f catch with the chopstick can accomplish anything. I did not get the trait. I guess he must be from, from the E.T. region. That's what they're setting up. Truly an absolutely massive empire here. Not got any troops compared to the Iron Throne, though. 270k men for the Iron Throne. <sighs> you take a boat trip with your old warrior teacher on a nearby lake. As he fishes, you stand up in a boat and practice the moves he has taught you. When am I going to learn how to punch, you ask? The man rocks the boat and you lose your footing, falling into the water. You resurface with his roaring, roaring laughter. Learn how to punch after you learn how to keep dry. You're all wet behind the ear. Got a poor fighter, at least. I assume this is like maybe a Karate Kid reference. I don't know. I've, I haven't have watched that movie in years, I think. So I will just assume it is. Let's try and resist our urges. It's not right. And let's build a second castle town. Because castle towns are just the best one to, to build. The Lord of Petria of the Demon Pass tried to usurp my title. His Master of Lords is supposedly travelling around the backcliffs trying to claim and fabricate documents. Well, let it be, I really don't think this guy's going to be a threat. In fact, it's not even him. It's one of his duchies. He's definitely not going to be a threat then. We're up to six a week, which is good. Okay, we are now a trained fighter. This fulfills our ambition. Gets us up to 50 personal combat skill. Now we're going to see if we can obtain Valyrian Steel. I was just talking about Valyrian Steel. We have Cast Town in Valyria. Valyria, sorry. That's going to get our monthly balance up. It's good to just sit for a bit. Especially, like, we could probably already want, uh, like crush these guys. But I don't see a need to. And I believe... How old now is Majesty? Majesty... Hmm... I thought 12 was the age dragons became adults. Am I, am I wrong? Majesty is a dragon, which obviously receives no formal education. Well, you don't have to put it like that, do you? <laughs> Interesting. Um, let me have a look at... Is Quicksilver still this as a childhood? Oh yeah, but Quicksilver is younger. Interesting. I will make sure that that is, is all correct. Because I'm not quite sure what age dragons become. Uh, for it. If you could tell in order to make the story work, I did have to spawn the dragon, so to speak. So <laughs> I do hope I've not messed anything up. I don't think I have at least. If I have, then uh, whoopsie daisies, I think would be the accurate term. Okay. Who needs basic defenses the most? Oh, an arranged marriage between my courtier and himself. Uh, sure. The Lord of Atlantis. Taking her as a secondary wife. This guy's got really beaten up. Oh, he's got cancer. <laughs> now I feel bad. 
It's like, dude, you look awful. He's like, yeah. What do you think? Hmm. I don't really need increase of much. Maybe we build another... Yeah, let's just build another castle town in the Black Cliffs. Have all three of them have a castle town. The Master Vicar of Tolos. I assume it's probably one of the guys who runs the temple. Perhaps. It's a large city. I mean, look at that tax income you get from cities. Oof. I don't believe I can directly hold cities, though. I don't think it's part of my culture. And let's see if we can get ourselves some bodyguards. Three bodyguards. How many commanders do we have? Okay, plenty, plenty of commanders. And my regent. I don't want to pick anyone. Because I think default is wife, which is why I want it to be anyway. Hmm. Court tutor. Yeah, my physician could be my court tutor. My king's justice. Madness and greatness are two sides of the same coin, and every time a cinder is born, the gods toss a coin in the air, and the world holds its breath to see how it lands. Ooh, she gains great, or quick rather. Wonderful. Let's get her on a thrift focus. She is club footed, which that is the definition of unfortunate. But her being quick, very good, very, very, very good. I mean, look at all those stats as well. It gives her. I would st still need a son, though. It's sort of the problem that we are still facing. Is my wife not going to get pregnant again? Oh, my bastard needs her. I, I must have skimmed past the event for this, because I actually don't remember clicking on an event to have a bastard. Um, Let's give a faith focus. No, she doesn't like me anymore. Let's let's get that sway up because we I would much appreciate if we had another child. She's a drunkard, not not good. Let's make it my designated region. Because if we are not having many kids, that's going to be a problem. I'm already thirty. I need to be having a son soon. Okay, I'll I will soon be ten years. I think. And I'll definitely uh, turn that on. Because even if I have a son, he would still rule. So that's fine. And this is a trade route. Very valuable. Prosperity is going down a little bit. There is no prosperity in these regions. Hmm. Don't need a shipyard, maybe. Private farms here. And private farms here. It's way cheaper to build in Illyria because of the um, labor, so to speak. <laughs> I think inviting Queen Vanilla to an activity we can do together would help us grow. Let's just have a deep discussion. It's not like she has to travel far for it. Or at least I hope she doesn't. Otherwise I think that's we've discovered part of the problem. What do you mean you don't have time to join? What else are you doing? <laughs> I'd hope you're not doing anything. You know, we'll get my spirits up. A bit of war. I think it's time that we finally get our dragon conquest of a second region done, now that we have a bit more money to finance it. Let's get these two armies together. Uh, unite the ships. Oh, we actually do need more. Okay, I'm going to have to raise my own personal ships. That's fine.
Oh, the princess has gained learning. Wonderful. Let's unite these. Do I not have a better commander? No, I don't. Okay, that's fine. Who has joined? Volantis has joined. Okay, well then let's win this war quick. I didn't realize Volantis was going to be joining, because that's actually a problem. That's a very large army. But they are going to have to be traveling through the wastes. Let's see if we can get a dragon on this siege. Get our ships up. I don't. I don't know if ships help the siege much. I believe they help a little bit. No clue where these men from Valance are going to be coming from. So I just need to keep my eyes open. This is isn't a high level four. I think no. It's 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 losing its men really quick. Still not having a sun though. This is the opposite of helpful. Could really do with a a young son being born to me. A minor wartime crash. I feel this becomes normal to have a minor wartime crash. 15k on my capital. Not great. Let's take his whole family. This I, do, I would prefer to not land on there at all if possible. Because I... Oh, 5k. That might... That will probably be enough to get the 99% I imagine. But let's take up this army beforehand to be sure. Right, and then meet this 5k. And I imagine that will give us a full percentage before we even need to fight that. Did they immediately unseaged it? That is even that's literally too quick for me to react to it. How, we didn't even capture them in a battle. They, they have a chance of actually sieging us because of that, which is annoying. Okay, there we go, there we go. Dragon sieges on places with no defences usually go well. Who would have guessed? Uh, we'll... why, I, why do I always do this? I need to take them to friendly ports before I do stuff like that. That's why I lost them before, and I'm assuming it's why you all yelled at me in the comments for doing it. But now you're in a friendly place, so you can be disbanded. There we go, Lyria looking very strong. Uh, it'll put me in a tiny bit of debt, but it'll only be for a moment, so we'll do that. And then we'll slowly rebuild the army again. We're building up a very sizable force here. The problem is no no count or higher tier vassal of this title has a negative opinion of you. So maybe I should have done that before I took Illyria. Is it only him who has a negative opinion? Positive. Negative. What if I send a gift to... Or maybe I can... I need. I. I don't. I'm doing all I can to try and make my wife like me, and it's not working. Maybe I need to award an honorary title. Because I need to get him, yeah, all three of them, to like me. So he now likes me. I'll, sh I'll release her from prison. I have, I owe you, who do I owe? I don't realize I owed anyone alone. I'll check into that. I don't think I took out a loan. At least I hope I didn't.
Right, we'll pay him to make him like us. And then we should be able to... Yes. And just like that, we finally have an heir. It's our very good looking... Uh, very... Well, very good looking. Very, very good uh, learning daughter. Although, sadly, club-footed. Although, who knows? There is, there is a chance that we have a son. And that is definitely the hope, is that we have a son. Let's recruit a court physician. Making him court dresser would be very funny. Um, let's make him the court poet. Master of the royal elephants. I hope I have elephants. I don't know if I have elephants. Elephants plus dragons is a wonderful mix. Oh dear. Things are not going well in Yunkai. Yep. Definitely not going well in Yunkai. And Marine is... Interesting. I didn't realize Marine even had money, but Marine are trying to colonize um, Rorash here. Wait... Or maybe it's become a small Marini city, so maybe they just instantly colonize it by an event. Because this this is a ruin. But they've seemingly immediately stopped making it a ruin. Which I was not expecting. I could attack Marine. I definitely could attack Marine. It'd be a huge dragon conquest for me as well. It's a very rich region. But then they would definitely bring in others in a coalition. I think I'll, I'll sit on that for a moment, at least. She's near Max with me. She has an ambition to tame a dragon. Travelers, they say that Quicksilver has escaped from the dungeons of Lorna Aenys Targaryen and has built her lair in the Red Keep. So the prince has basically just let a dragon run off. <laughs> 48 year old Aegon. I'm not much younger. I'm like, oh, I am a decent bit younger. 33. How many, how many kids does he have alongside Aenys? Only Aenys and a bastard. That is... And he's married to the bastard. Interesting. House of the, the House of the Dragon is already looking a bit weak here. <laughs> I don't know what Aegon's thinking. This keeps happening because it's happening in the uh, the Harren Hall game as well. Where we start with Aegon's Conquest, where Aegon just died right away and then no one had any kids. Hopefully that fixes itself. Is Marine in Conquest? They seem to have men raised. They are. They're attacking the Carl of, Lo of Lolo. Maybe that might mean if I strike now, their armies may not be there. It will definitely be a coalition. There's no chance it's not a coalition. And I'll leave, I'll leave that open to, to your guys' questions. Should I attack Marine? What do you guys think? Should should I next next episode attack Marine? For now, I'm, I think we, we've only just taken Mentaris, so I would... It'd be smarter to keep this as it is. Let's see if I can take Demon Pass off him. He says no. I say you have no men. I I think I'll only need this many men, especially if, if I have a dragon. We don't want to raise too many men because it gets expensive to have an army raised. Just take out these small armies. Do 
I not have a third commander? I definitely have a third commander. Do my court, can my court physician stop dying? It would be really helpful if they just stop dying for a bit. My vassal has been slain in combat. Is he not my master at arms? Okay, no, he's my master at arms. Good. He was one of my knights, though. You know what we do when we're in Mantaris, boys? We rain dragon fire down. This will see. Let's get the ships ready here, in case we need to land on Illyria. Ooh, a major conflict going on here for the Yogo. They're at war. The Volantis is trying to colonize them. Interesting. He's currently winning as well. Oof. Volantis going for some early expansion, it seems. Is this all from holding? Yeah, all of their holdings is what's giving them this bonus. Not good. We're going to use Dragonfire again. There it goes. Family under house arrest will do it. And they're going to be revoking that title from you. And revoking that title from you. And these are now our, our vassals directly, so they can keep these titles. Look at that, building ourselves a proper power base. Don't know why I brought these out. Let's disband these. Look at that. We're ruling through air power. 6,000 men in Antares. That's going to boost our max up to 24,000. Oof. And then we'll, our vassals can keep their lands themselves. This is going to build us a proper power base. Because we're going to need at least about 20,000, 30,000 men if we're going to go up against. Because if we attack Marine, I think Yunkai and Astapor will join them. Maybe even Volantis, since we learn Volantis will jump over. And if that's the case, we need to be ready for a, for a major scaled war there. I need to see about impregnating my wife. <laughs> because she is not having kids. And I do not want to end this early. Prince Anus has, attempted, has a, apparently successfully has, hatched one called Zalagon. Good for him. Aragon. He actually seems pretty good, um, but he costs 40 gold. Um, he does seem pretty good. He's a hunter as well, diligent. <coughs> a bit better than my current Master at Arms. Sure. We'll bring him in to make my Master at Arms. Get him training up the troops here. Marine likes me a bit more. I don't care much. I mean, maybe they'd accept vassalage if I show up to them with a dragon and say, kneel before me. Or maybe part of me is considering just not paying him. Attractive. That's good. Like, what if I just don't give him his dragon egg? What's he going to do? Go to war? That's what I want. Could be a good way out of our um, so-called agreement. Only good, good amount of money at the moment. Need a new court physician because they keep dying. 
for, I can't look for another one for three years, so for a while I guess I just won't have one. Could look for a smith. Hmm. Not for now. Though my ambition is still Valyrian steel. Sometimes you get the event for it, so we'll see if we can get one. Hmm. She's come into hiding in my court after killing her husband. Or rather, his, sorry, her husband vanished without a trace. He's ruthless, so who knows? Maybe he deserved it. Given birth to his child? Kalhasso. I mean, hey, my, my lands will always be open to Valyrians. We are we are the, the, the Stockholm, the what remains of Valyria. They now find me intimidating. Hey, that's good against plots, so I'll take it. I shall say that for this episode, we shall end it there. And the question should become, guys, what should we do with Marine? They are right on our doorstep, and now we've promised them a dragon egg. I would much rather perhaps see them burn. But I don't know if he's the kind of man to do this. I mean, would King Rangar do such a thing? I'm not sure about Queen Elena. She's apparently jumbling our words. But she's not having a child, which is very bad for us as we have only one trueborn, which is Princess Visenya. She's looking to be a really bright, bright, bright child. But we need, we need a male heir. Or at the very least, we need many heirs. That's what I would like. We'll have to see. Until then, I want to thank you guys so much. I've really enjoyed this video, and I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Uh, episode 3 will now be up on the Patreon if you want to check out the next video a week early. Thank you guys so much. And, uh, yeah, in general, I'm really enjoying this region. There's so much we can do here. And of course, I'm enjoying Majesty, who has now, I can confirm, grown to be an incompetent commander, apparently, but is a fully grown dragon, 19 years old, a mighty beast, undoubtedly. But compared to a dragon like Valyrian, I don't think she has much of a chance. Like, if we look at Valyrian, 107 martial, but a couple extra years on her, but he is strong. He's, that means he'll get much bigger than she will with that size growth. Aegon grows into his lady years. We grow into our middling years with a nice looking haircut as well. <laughs> well, what shall we do with Marine? What shall we do with this whole region? If you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. Of course, they won't be for my next video because my next video will have been recorded already. If that makes any sense. <laughs> so really, you're leaving comments, but I kind of already decided what I'm going to do. But in general, your comments are very useful to me. Because I, I I do plan out things a while in advance. So give me give me general ideas. Give me general thoughts about where you think our, our eyes should lie for the future of Illyria. Thank you guys so much. And I shall see you guys in the next episode. Until then.